Hello everyone and welcome to this special edition of Painters Online. Um, I'm going to paint you a snow scene this morning and demonstrate how um, the techniques required really. Our composition is pretty uh, pretty simple really as you can see on the screen. A large oak tree in the foreground, um, some smaller trees to the left, a bit of hedging, a nice guy at gateway leading to fields in the distance. Have, the light is actually coming more or less face on, probably just behind the large tree on the right, um, which gives us a good opportunity to have nice light sky. Um, but this particular painting has most of the um, the actual snow that's uh, accumulated on the trunks of the build, the um, trees uh, and branches. Um, they're all in shadow, so this technique shows you exactly how to deal with that situation. I've already put my drawing down onto my watercolour paper, and that's there, as you can see. And um, got my mixing palette <coughs> nice and clean and ready for use. All my uh, necessary... Um, uh, some pencils that I've done the drawing in, selection of um, um, brushes to choose from, a bit of old kitchen towel, and I'm all ready to start uh, putting on the basic washers. Well, when you look at snow scenes, um, a lot of people think, well, that's very cold and grey on a winter's day. Um, well, it is cold, that's for certain, unless we've got strong sunlight. But also, um, if you've got strong sunlight, the snow reflects that snow, that sunlight. So you, you always get a nice sort of reflective feel. Uh, so, and that is warmth. So we've got to add some warm colours on. First thing I'm going to do, the sky is extremely light. So I'm just lightly damping to start with the sky with this um, mop brush running across the sky like that, down as far as beyond um, the uh, foreground into the distant fields. Now my far distance will be here. This is my middle distant field, so the distant fields are damp as well. Okay, <clears throat> now the first thing we've got to do is pick up where the uh, real sunlight is and I'm going to go straight in with lemon yellow a nice dab of lemon yellow with a little bit of light red there we are because to me the sun is around that sort of area so that's where we need the real brilliance of the sunlight now as we move away from that we use a little olizarin dropped in. That gives a bit more uh, of a glow to the sky but also gives you a barrier between any blues that you're likely to add and the yellow which would of course cause green. Um, there we go, nice bit of light and then of course we introduce the blue. Well I'm going to introduce, um, I'm going to use ultramarine for this. I know it can tend to granulate a little um, but um, not too concerned with that. But albeit very light, we're, I'm not. Uh, it, it is a light sky. Not going to play with it too much. There you go. Look at that. Lovely. Now that light will then reflect in the in the snow. So what I'm using, yeah, I'm going to dull it a bit. So I'm using raw sienna in the distance, just a little duller yellow in the distance there. But as I come forward I'm using lemon yellow again. And this time it's got to be very light. Then I'm going to use a little, I'm going on to dry paper because it's not a bad thing to have the odd patch of pure white, particularly in the foreground. Then I'm going to use a little bit of the olizarin too because that also reflects 
uh, the sky. Here we are. If you go too deep, just damp your brush and spread it across like that. Lovely. Look at that. And that is the first washes. You obviously need to allow that to completely dry. So although it's a snow scene, we're not all white. It's warm colours, but very light. Well, that's pretty much dry. So now we start looking at the very distance. Now, it's very, very hazy and very, very light. So we need soft edges at the top, hard edges at the, at the bottom of these sort of distant areas. They need to melt into the sky. So I'm just lightly damping the paper just across the top. Then under that, I'm going to put in uh, cerulean blue with a touch of, um, let's put a touch of raw sienna in there mainly blue and put a little bit of light red too just to give it a little bit of a, a distant glow there we are it's going to be going to be very weak it's a bit of distant land there we are see the way it's soft at the top hard edged at the bottom and it's a bit higher there comes down a tad but you can't really see too much of that and it finished hard edge where the middle distant fields are now I've stopped at the tree so we don't get too um, um, intermixed with the uh, what will eventually be snow uh, on the trees themselves so that's that part of the uh, painting produced quite well now into that I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush and I'm going to use ultramarine now with a touch it's got to be a reasonably strong mix because it's still slightly damp ultramarine with a touch of light red just to give me a distant gray really want well, to be bluey gray but it's got to have a slightly warm tint to it there we go and there's a tree there so it's, it's uh, flooding there's a bit of fencing so we'll put that a bit of hedging and where it hits the hard, dry edge, it stays. See where it's more of a solid area there. But where it meets the uh, damp, it uh, it rides up. And there's a, a tree there. Going a little bit more solid with the colour. And perhaps a little bit of warmth in there. There you go. Look at that. And that's the distant tree standing there. Uh, nice and soft, nice soft edges. Um, might as well have a little bit of hedging there too, I think. Always a good idea. Just behind there, just to add a bit of interest. Let that bleed up very nicely. There we are. Uh, and that really is our distant area. Once it dries, it'll all go lovely and... Uh, and uh, soft and clean um, and of course the trees in the foreground will stand out nice and clear in clear relief really okay well that's just drying off nicely nice bit of depth there blurring into the distant sky I've even started to warm up so it's slightly warm so although, you know, it's distant, I've given a little bit of warmth, but of course, as I come forward to the hedging, then I re really need some nice warm tones uh, because the sun is hitting the front of the, um, uh, or the, um, the, the side of the, those hedgings. Uh, and I'm going to use a flat brush, uh, well loaded with uh, lemon yellow and a touch of light red let's put a touch of crimson in there too so we get a nice warm it's virtually in shadow but it's got that lovely um, feeling of that the glow from the from the sun there we go and it overhangs that bit I don't want to completely a little bit close to that tree but that's that's because I'm rather um, excited about the whole business 
um, which um, quite often happens when you get quite excited about this sort of business. Now I'm using a bit more burnt umber now um, in the lower area just to give it a bit of extra depth. There we are. And then I'll move to the other side of that tree. Now I'm going to paint around the trees, could paint over and lift off. Maybe I'll need to lift off at some point. Um, and as I go behind, I'm using more ultramarine in the mix with burnt sienna. Just so that I can get a darker feel. Just a little bit of a darker feel. Uh, painting in between the trees, like that. Quite dark in the lower area there. Shadows will obviously overtake all of this shortly. As you go up to the top, you open up, you, you allow the brush to get um, sort of dry really. And it tends just to open up the, so you get that open effect to the tops of those um, uh, bits of hedging really. Uh, and then as we come down the back, you know, we can deepen this with shadow later. But we add more blue to try and get that deep dark feel. And of course what you do one side you need to do the other. Don't just, you know, I put that colour there. But I put it there, there and a little bit there. So it's a continuation really. Um, but we will um, have some shadow there shortly anyway. Um, and just make certain you come up. Don't leave too many gaps around um, those trees. Because... It's vital that you allow a little bit of uh, light to come through there. Notice how I'm leaving lots of sort of a bit more blue, a bit more burnt umber now. More blue, a bit more burnt umber for the area right at the base there, just to show up. What's happened is that the snow has been driven against those posts and the hedging so consequently some areas you'll see um, quite a bit of um, gaps which will be eventually the snow now this side a bit more burnt sienna in there just to give it a bit of warmth put a bit of light red this side this side is going to be quite open see how I'm leaving plenty of gaps around the top edge of these trees um, always a good thing to do it just gives that impression of snow sharpening up the back there and just a little thing of some overhanging branches there uh, a bit more burnt umber a bit more ultramarine trying to get that really dark glow a bit more burnt sienna or even light red I want to keep warmth, although it's a snow scene, you know, um, and that area there is, of course, against the light. So consequently, it shows up very, very nicely. But the gaps you leave are the actual snow on the hedge work, really. And uh, brilliant. Um, we'll allow that to dry. Well, as I said, the snow has been driven against the um, um, the side of the trees and the hedging. Uh, so, consequently, it's, it's you know we've got to leave gaps um, for the snow to show. Um, but other than that, we've got burnt sienna, burnt umber, with some ultramarine. Might even put a bit of burnt sienna. Um, Prussian blue in there yeah just to give a nice dark sort of feel to these dark really dark greeny brown right now the first thing I'm going to do is to use a uh, um, bit of license here now that is well it's not license it's more or less what we see really that is the edge of the trunk that we can see and so we that is all in that is the actual trunk itself. The other side is where the snow is. 
and of course you may get the odd little patch run over you may even get a little bit of a patch like that where it's not driven you know it's actually not clung to the um to the tree itself there we are so that's the lower area uh, just a little bit weaker perhaps we'll go and see Hannah in there um, for uh, this one here and that's the same you know we've got little bits of snow showing see the way I'm leaving the the, the, the white paper maybe a little bit around the base there too just you know just where the snow is showing and your own, your what you're doing, you're painting the negative really, leaving the snow areas um, unpainted. And as the brush runs out of paint, you just gradually um, feed it up into the tree. I'm just dotting around because there are areas where the tree will not have snow on the right hand side. Um, and this one too, there. Nice to leave a bit of snow against that darker area there, but other than that, uh, and of course that shoots off there, where there's a, another bow that runs away. That bow comes out of the back, that one. So I'm at hitting that into it. See the way I'm doing that? That one, I've left a gap. That's where you can see the difference between a branch that runs away and a branch that actually comes more towards you. And of course, that swings round like that. I'm putting the main trunks in first. That shoots off like that. See? And we've got a little bit there. Um, then the one at the back, a little bit lighter. The brush is running out of paint. So consequently, that does help to give a lighter feel to that... Um, that trunk and of course there will be areas there where the trunk is actually um to put one or two bits in there too where we've not got snow and that shoots off up that one comes away at the front but this one goes away at the back so consequently that's going to be but there's going to be a lot of snow on those trees and that's the way you produce the feeling of snow hitting the side of your trees. Good, well I'm going to look at the big tree now. And this one will have more warmth in that. So I'm going to use Pr um, Prussian Blue with, to make it really dark because you've got to remember the sun is here so this will be the darker more or less silhouette really so Prussian blue with rose mat matter or as I've got olives and crimson right, there you go and this is really dark and, and warm too now it's a split in the trunk there you can actually see where the snow is just driven up where these um, um, lovely um, roots are formed and it's going to be like that but it's I'm dragging the brush to try to get a sense of you know um, where it's just beginning to break up let's just use the paint a little bit on there first and where it's opening up there don't look too many perfect lines there's one or two little pieces there that we can see that haven't got snow on so it's just using a bit of license really you can you can build up um the sort of scene you know the, the trunk that you require the snow actually is only in a small area there but i'm going to make a bit more of it than that um i'm actually going to um make a little bit more snow um, because i do like um none there but there will be a bit in that hollow where all the branches come away and that's then working its way like that and just leaving little gaps there where the snow has began to open up onto the branches so it's driven this way you see so 
you know down the back edge we've not got much and um, a bit more blue a bit more olizarin um, and going to paint this branch that hangs out there like that that comes around good that's okay and give it a scraggy edge in a minute once the paint goes from the brush but in the meantime oh there you go that's a bit better you know it lays there like that and this branch is in front of that one so we'll paint this one first and that goes off like that um, then up the trunk there there's a lot lay in the middle there a lot of snow laying there so we need to leave the gaps where that snow lays but this is a branch that hangs from the front like that we'll continue that shortly with a smaller brush and um, that's the way you produce that's the way I produce this sort of you could use masking fluid but I prefer to do it with the brush um, you know masking fluid is okay um, but to me I can do it with the brush better um, don't know you know it just feels more natural really to finish off the um, the seam with the brush rather than uh, using masking fluid to block out areas okay plenty of snow on that one too okay well I've got the rigger the um, small brush you can use a rigger but this is a small brush at points um, and just putting in one or two smaller branches I'm gonna do the same with this I've just got to continue this one that runs across there like that and this one runs over that over those distant um, areas and of course you can thicken up the branches later on when you come to um, put your snow on and there is some smaller branches this is where we're getting some slightly smaller branches coming away uh, these are, are coming out the bush at the side there uh, and a lot of these smaller branches haven't really got a great deal of snow on them um, it um, you know and they're coming away there like that and just introduce a few of those just stroke them in allowing the brush to run across the top of the paper um, lots of um, obviously we've got lots of uh, other areas of shadow that's the shadow that's going to make it and uh, so these are from that bush there presumably you know one or two in the deeper part of that um, not a great deal from that main um, area of um, uh, a tree because most that old that lovely old oak in the foreground most of the main branches are up in the um, in the more than canopy above it's one or two small little areas there um, coming away just to help fill a few gaps uh, always a good thing to do there we are okay good now we look at the gate posts now this I'm going to use burnt sienna um, there's a bit of snow on the top of these posts so you, I'm only painting underneath burnt sienna with a bit of Prussian in there just to make it darker um, painting underneath and you can just hint or see that they go in to the hedging there like that and of course down the right hand side because the snow was drifting in sorry down the left hand side the snow was drifting in from the right same here underneath down the left hand side and of course the snow lays on the top there as well like that and then we have the lovely ultramarine in there just to really darken it because this is a metal post and there's really very little snow on that so we've got the metal gate post there very little snow but there will be a little and of course the um the lovely gate itself 
which I'm putting in fairly freely um, and I've opened it deliberately um, because I do need to f I like to fill a bit of an entrance to the gate to the field I don't like to block that off with them um, with a um, with a gate that's um, that's closed it just shuts off the distance and then finally with some light red into that mix just to give it a bit of warmth we've got some odd little patches here and there let's go a little bit darker than that put a bit of you know notice all my washes all my colors are fairly warm they're not you know if that if they're dark they're dark brown and not um and not gray a lot of people snow, think snow scenes, they're all grey and dreary. Um, they, they can be on a grey day, um, but of course, when you're looking at uh, a uh, bit of sunshine, then, um, um, you know, you can get quite a bit of warmth on a, on a day like this. Uh, and obviously this is not the shadow. Um, maybe... Just a little bit of hinting at a track running in to the field. Now that's a pleasant thought. Just thought about that. A bit of interesting track running into the field pulls your eye in. Um, and of course there's then one or two little patches where the snow, perhaps is the odd dog walker or something is um, uh, been around. So... Uh, quite likely there's just one or two little bots and dots of footmark. I'm not putting them in specifically for footmarks, but um, uh, always nice to have a little bit of that um, just to warm it up. Now we look at the shadow. Finally, it's the shadows. Well, shadows can look quite purpley, so I'm using ultramarine and or and crimson um, sun coming from the right so shadows tending to just come towards us so that's the gate post we've got a little bit of the, of the section of the gate and it's quite elongated um, because of the low sun and then of course we get the post and the top of where the snow is sitting on the top of the post, across the top there, across there, down the right hand side, and these then become in shadow. See the way we're getting the shadow effect with that? And also areas here. A little bit of shadow there. Just hinting perhaps there may be some snow onto that. Um, certainly here in the lower area. A little bit of light coming through, so there's just but just a little bit of shadow. Quite strong in the lower area because that's uh, where most of the shadow will be. Um, and all of a sudden you get that hint that it's a snow scene with shadow. A little bit down there, a little bit there. Oh, and of course the posts are completely white. So that's always a good thing to suggest. Like that, a little bit of that into there. A little bit of that into there. Okay, so that's that. Then the trees. We'll do the trees here first. Very easy to do. Just paint in the light areas really. All you've got to do and all of a sudden they become snow areas in shadow always easier I think to paint a snow scene that's um that got that's got light coming towards you and than it is if you've got light um heading away really um that's the way I always look at um these things but maybe um 
other artists will tell you different but there you go and so that's all in shadow because the sun is behind those trees like that look at that lovely beautiful lovely way of uh, producing shadows I think and that's all you need to do um, to get those lovely shadows down the side of the trees that goes up like that and like that got a little bit of shadow there on that and then of course we do the large tree which has the lovely sort of purpley, let's add a bit more blue to that purpley blue shadow there and it doesn't matter if you touch the um, go over into the um, the dark um, area of the um, of the trunk all the better really to be quite honest with you far better to produce that um, a bit more blue in there just to uh, and, and then just stroke it on like that look one clean wash of color and all of a sudden you got that lovely feeling of snow there we go certainly paint on all of those light areas um, that lovely feeling of snow and that's finished there go there like that like that and this one goes up there and this one goes up there and that is as simple as that the gaps you leave are the snow areas now of course we've got all the uh, shadows onto the um, trees I'm just going to put a little more here just bring that up so it's a little darker there then of course those trees cast a shadow of their own and that post so this is all in shadow that's all in shadow that's all in shadow there and we sweep that across and snow quite often um, isn't uh, you know the shadow isn't um, always very even because quite simply a bit more blue in there now um, quite simply the you know the snow um, is obviously you know driven in places not necessarily cover covering everything but of course where that trunk comes that will be solid like that but of course where the hedging is where those trees are you will have plenty of gaps and just have fun with these shadows and then allow the brush to um, run out of paint and that gives that broken effect and that is all you need to know to paint a lovely snow scene um, and associated trees well there's the scene on my um, lap on my um, computer screen um, and this is painting my interpretation of painting itself um, all that needs now got a bit of a border taken the surround off all that needs now is for me to sign it and I always recommend you sign all of your work whether you think it's good bad or indifferent and um, um, because you never know what will become of it one day um, who knows you never know so I always put my signature on and I put it on in the paint that I've used quite often gives it a bit more of an authentic sort of feel so that's it i hope you've enjoyed that and have a lovely christmas and stay tuned to my youtube channel 
but also painters online we'll see you all again very very soon thank you for watching